Hello! Have you ever seen a steam clock before? Well, here's the one in Vancouver, which partially runs on electricity, and looks like a recent power failure is making it show a blinking 12. Alright, just kidding. This is what it actually looks like. And what I was showing before is an example of a plane track replacement, which is what we're going to talk about today on using Blender for video editing. So how is this going to work? What we're going to do is go inside of Blender's motion tracking workspace and create four tracking markers so that we have a four-sided shape. And once we have that tracked throughout the entire clip, we will then create a plane track out of it. Plane track as in a, a two-dimensional surface. And in this case, it's going to be the clock face. Once we have that plane track set up, then in the compositor, we can replace it or partially obscure it, either with an image or a movie file. We have options. All right, so that's the plan. Let's get started. We are right now inside of our video editing workspace, and I have my video file loaded up. And the goal is to replace this clock face with something else. The first part of what we need to do is going to be inside of the motion tracking workspace, and I have already created a video dedicated to an introduction to motion tracking. So here in this video, I won't go through it at my usual slow pace. We're gonna move fairly quickly until we get to the new stuff, all right? If you have any trouble following, please do go and watch that video, that introduction to motion tracking. Right, so let's get into it. We will click the plus sign and then VFX so we can go into motion tracking. And then from here, click open and select the file. That's this one here. All right, and let's uh, resize some of these uh, regions here. And for this, yeah, location should be fine. Keyframe, we'll turn on normalize. And now that we're looking at this more closely, so I will create tracking markers at each of these corners here. So let's go ahead and start with that. Okay, so holding down on the control key, I'm going to left click here. And let's switch over to track so I can make sure that's that looks okay. Yep, although no, let's move it in a little bit more. There we go. Uh, and go into clip display, turn on search pattern, info, there we go. And now over here as well, here's our second one. Let's shift that up a bit. I'm using my arrow keys to move around. Okay, now the bottom right. Okay, need to adjust it a bit, all right. And then finally the bottom left. And yeah, that's okay, that's good. All right, so we have our four tracking markers. And in a prior video, I had said that it's a pretty good idea most of the time to uh, start in the middle and then go forwards and then backwards. But in this case, I've already done it before and I know it'll work fine if I just do all the tracking right from frame one and select all four of the tracking markers so we can do it all in one shot. So they're all selected now. Let's go ahead and do the tracking. All right. So while it's tracking, I'm going to click on this to lock it in place. Actually, I think I'm too late on doing that, but that's fine. Looks like we're almost there and we're done. Great. Let's just quickly review what we've got. Okay. Um, yeah, that's looking pretty good. I don't see any issues there. So we are now ready to move on to the new content, which is creating that plane track out of these four individual tracking markers. And it's super simple. Let me show you. To do this, we have to go up along the left side here. And where we have this option here, click on this where it says solve and expand out plane track. And then it's just a press of this button, create plane track. Just make sure you have these four markers selected and you're good to go. Now, before we actually do it, I want to point out that uh, it is possible to create many tracking markers. And that is supposed to help with the accuracy of the plane track you're creating. But I do need to tell you that in the end, what you're going to get is still just a four sided object based off of the tracking markers that you have. If you're going to try to create a, a shape that has many sides and more than four, it's not going to work. In the end, you'll just get a four-sided plane 
that you can then reposition. Okay, so I just wanted to tell you that right now, uh, that yes, you can create additional tracking markers and it's encouraged, but really you only need four. Uh, if you were looking to create like a, a Tetris shape um, out of floor tiles, uh, that's, you can't do that. At least not directly, but you can kind of build up to it. And I'll show that as a bonus at the end of the video. Anyway, so let's do this. We have our four tracking markers selected. So now we just click on create plane track and there you go. All of a sudden we now have this white frame and this thing has switched over to, so let's see what it shows now. If we expand out plane track, we can see we have this plane track and some options here. But the first thing we need to do is align the corners of our new plane track to what we actually wanted. So we had, let me zoom in a bit here and go to this one first because it's right here. So this is the point that we were tracking, but the plane track actually shows its corner over here. So all you have to do is just click and drag, and you have to do this for each of the four uh, corners. So I'll do that, and I'll zoom over, sorry, scroll over, pan over. So I'll pan over and then do it for the next one. And it's just a left click, left click, and then drag and drop over into position. So that's three out of four. And the easy thing for me, because I'm doing it against this square shape, uh, I can tell that it's working well also because once I zoom out, you can see the white line of my plane pretty much matches the frame of the clock face. So we've got that in place, but let's see what other things are showing up here. So this is the name field, so we can rename this as we please. So I'll call this clock face. Auto keyframe I haven't played with, but I think like if you needed to for it to change over time, then you could uh, enable that and then tweak the different corners as you need to. In this case, we don't need to touch that. Now these options here, a little bit confusing. Let me show you. Uh, so as the example, we're going to try to replace this with an image, right? So let me open up an image and I'll just go down here into, let's say the blender icon. All right. So what it looks like, it looks like we're done. Looks like we have something in place already. We have our nice blender icon. And as we uh, scrub through, it matches up to the movement of the camera and, and looks like it, it was just plastered on there. But this is just a preview you can't actually do anything with this. If we were to take this now, our modified movie clip and put it back into the video sequence editor, nothing shows up. It's just a preview, but the good thing about it is that it's fast. When we take this and pop over to the compositor, depending on the speed of your computer, it'll be slower. Like if I try to do this kind of scrubbing through the compositor, it just, I won't get this frame rate. So it's very nice to have to give you that idea about how it's gonna look, but this isn't how you actually do it. At this point, we're good now to move into the compositor. We will come back here later because there's some other things that I want to show about sizing. So let's go ahead and do that. We are going to click on the plus sign and go into VFX and compositing. And again, I do have videos about the compositor. So we're going to move at a fairly quick pace here until we get to the new stuff. And if you do have any questions after watching, if this is your first time watching any of these uh, videos on my channel, please do go check it out. I'm, I'll have a link somewhere in the top right corner. Uh, so you can click on that or also in the show notes. But anyway, so the first thing we're going to do that, that I like to do is uh, take a copy of the scene. Uh, to keep those separate. So I'll just copy settings on the scene and I'll call this compositor because that's what it is. Uh, we'll click on use nodes and then we'll uh, hit the home button to zoom in here. All right, and then now we're going to left click on render layers and press X to delete that. And we'll go to the add menu, input. So we're gonna have to add a few things here. Let's start by adding the movie clip because that's, we need that, we need that movie clip. So we'll just place that and I will go over here. I like to work here instead of over on these little tiny spots. 
So I'll click that because we've already been working with this video file, so it's already here. So I can click that and load it in. And uh, let's go ahead and press Control, Shift, and left click on this so we can get a view of it in the background. Uh, things might get, you know what, things might get a little bit messy here. So instead of viewing it in the backdrop, you know, I'm going to disable that. I'll click this and I will switch over this thing here because we don't need the properties editor. I'll click on that and switch this to the image editor. And then uh, over here, expand this out and click on that and change that to viewer node. Okay, there we go. So now we can see what we need to see. I hit the home button and that's great. Okay, so we've got our dedicated image viewer over there. That means we can just focus on our nodes in this space. Let me shrink that down a bit. Don't need all that. I do want to see the whole frame range though. There we go. All right, so we have our movie clip, but what else do we need? We also need the image or video file that we want to place on top where we had defined that plane. So let's go ahead and add that next. This time I'll just press uh, Shift A to go to add. And that blinking 12 was a video file. So again, we'll go to movie clip and I'll place this down over here and I'll click the open and select my source for that, which is this, this video file. Let's double click and there it is. So that's the little preview window of it. If I jump around a bit, I should see it showing 12. Uh, there it is, yes. So that's our blinking 12. Uh, so now, now is the most exciting part, maybe. Uh, we need to add a new node that we haven't seen before. So we'll go to add, and this one is under distort. And it is called plain track deform. So you click that, and let's set that down right over here. Now, what do we need from this one? We have this open option here. And if we click on this, we have a couple options. What we need to do is select the video file that this thing is based off of. So that is our steam clock. So let's go ahead and pick that. So we've got our steam clock selected, but we need more than just that. We, after we select our video, then we have to click on this empty field here and choose camera. There's only one choice. And over here, the next one, we click on that and then we have to choose the plane track that we created. So, so far we've only created one. So there's only the one option. So let's go ahead and pick that. If we had more than one, then we could make our choice. We could have multiple plane track deform nodes in action inside of our workflow. But here we're just doing the one. All right, so let's, as a final step, connect the dots here. The image output socket going into the image input socket over here. And this is pretty much set up now. So let's go ahead and take a look by pressing Control, Shift, left click on our plane track deform node. And there you go. Is that what you were expecting? Thumbs up, uh, get a gold star if that's what you thought you would get from this. This is what we see. Uh, and if I kind of jump around through the footage, you can, as you watch over here, you'll see that what we have here is that plane that we had defined inside of the motion tracking in the movie clip editor is now repositioning around because that's exactly where it was inside of our footage and the content is actually whatever is in here whatever is being fed into the image input socket so that's how this node works and if we switch again if we switch over to the view of the plane by again pressing control shift left click then this is what's going on here so it's effectively giving us a view of that plane and we can feed it whatever content we want it just squeezes it into that space that's how this works so now how do we actually take that content of ours and put it on top of the original video we can do that easily by using the alpha over node so let's go ahead and do that now i'm gonna scroll over here sorry pan not scroll i'm gonna move these things over we don't need to see those just yet and let's go ahead and add something so 
Uh, and this time I'll show you something different that I just learned recently. If you click and drag from one of these sockets and then just release, then it brings up this menu and you can type in uh, what it is that you want it to connect to. So in this case, we want an alpha over and it needs to go over uh, actually the image. So let's go ahead and do that, click that. And there you go, we have our alpha over. In case you didn't want to do that, the alpha over, if you click on add, yeah, I believe it's color. Yeah, there it is, the first one under color. But this was a fun way of doing that. So we have our alpha over and this movie clip, our original clip, is basically the, the bottom layer, right? That's the base layer, so we, it goes to the first socket. Now, the output of our plane track, that's going to become the input to the second image socket. And now, when we press Control, Shift, left click, there you go. We have our original footage that now has the blinking 12 replacing the original content, which was the clock face. And that's how it works. So that's pretty much it. Now we just need to click and drag to connect to the composite. And we can take this back to the video editing workspace to see the final product here. So let's jump back to video editing and uh, flip it back over to scene, jump to the start and go to add. And we need it as a scene, the compositor, and there it is. So let me roll that around. That's how it's done. So let's not finish just yet. There's a few things that I want to show you uh, back in the compositor. So let's go back in there now. Oh, and I'll switch that back to compositor. So before we had seen that uh, inside of the motion tracking in that movie clip editor, we had the Blender logo. So we can definitely do that here. So let's see that in action. So I'm going to over here, I'm gonna add image. I'll place it down here. And we already have it loaded, so I'll just select it from like that. Okay, so there it is. And now I'll just click and drag to replace what's being used. So we have that, right? But here's a question. What if we wanted this Blender logo to actually extend past that clock face? I had selected those points because they were very easy to track, but maybe I actually want this image to kind of look like it's, it's uh, much larger, like it covers this area here. So we can try to do that, but what we're gonna see quickly is that it doesn't work. Let me uh, shift this down here, and then what we'll do is we'll add another node here. I'm gonna say Shift A, and I will go to Distort, because what I wanna do is scale it up. So I'll click scale and then place it here so that it, it automatically reconnects. And now I'm gonna set, let's say that I want it at double the size. So each of these I'll say two and two, press enter and, and look at that. So by default, it had already put it into like the right sizing to fit inside of our plane. But if we try to make it larger, it just gets cropped. So it's not something that we can do here. The trick is to change the plane track. So let's go back over there to motion tracking. So here we have our clock face. Now, when we had first created the clock face, it was based off of these four tracking markers that we had set up, right? And then after that, then we had to align the corners of the plane with where they actually should have gone because they went close to where the tracking markers were, but they weren't exact. Now, the plane track takes on these different properties based off of the tracking markers that we used, but it is its own entity. It doesn't have to be this size. So what we can do is grow and shrink it as we please. All right, so what we can do, uh, the plane track is still selected, so we can press the letter S to scale and then just drag the mouse out. There, you can see that. So now it's bigger. And we can do other things too if we want it. We can press G to grab it and then shift it around so it's more like this. Okay, and now with it like that, let's kind of scrub through and make sure. Does that look okay still? Looks pretty good to me. So that's something that you can do if you needed to uh, base the positioning 
of your plane on certain points, but then you actually need the effect to be larger than that. You can scale your plane track, because here are my points now, these four white uh, squares. I can continue to scale if I wanted to, make it even larger, right? And once you have it to the size you want, and you and again, you can load up an image here, or you can set it to a color. Like, for example, let's set it to a color. Let's go instead of the Blender icon. Uh, let's see how to do that. Okay, let's click the X, and we can click on New, and uh, we'll set it as a color like this. Uh, let's make it uh, this purplish color, say OK. There. So now you can see that's actually the area that it's taking up. So we have our plane track set up. Now we can go back into the compositor and see how that looks over there. Let's jump back over and uh, click around a bit to get that refresh. And there it is. So now it looks weird because we have our scale. So let's just uh, get rid of that scale and just reconnect it to see how it looks. And there you go. That's pretty much what we were expecting based off of what we were doing inside of the movie clip editor. So that's how you can uh, set up uh, a plane based off of certain features, but then expand it out so that it can stretch beyond those dimensions. Okay, so that is it. That's how you can do plane track replacement inside of Blender. Now, before you go, one extra thing I wanted to talk about and show you is how you can have multiple planes set up inside of the same uh, movie clip so that you can do a replacement for something that's not just a four-sided shape. So to do that, let's go ahead and jump over to a different uh, file I've got. Okay, so here we go. Here I've got uh, some video footage of a wonderful bathroom. And you can see I've got these different markers set up. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if I were to try to select them all and then turn it into a track, it won't create a shape that follows this. It'll just create the four-sided plane. So let me show you that. So I'll press A to select it all. Uh, and then I'll go over here to solve and under plane track, expand that and click create plane track. And there you can see it is only four different corners that we have to work with. So press control Z to get rid of that. So instead, what we'll do is we will create two plane tracks, one for this top section, and then one for this bottom section. Okay, so uh, I'll press Alt A to deselect everything and then select the, just the ones I need for the top. So that's these four. Create plane track like that. Okay. Go over here to plane track and I'll call this top. And then I will uh, zoom in a bit and then do my alignment. And I won't, I won't be perfect. I'll just make it close enough. This is just bonus material after all. Okay, there we go. Good enough. Now, let's select the other four and create our second one. So holding down on the shift key. Okay, oops, that wasn't it. This one, there we go. R4 here, create plain track. Okay, and I'll call this one bottom. And then again, let's uh, try to align our corners here of our plain track. And at this point, now let's go ahead and choose an image. Okay, so I'll click open. And I'll go over to my sources and red blocks. There we go. Got a red block there. And how do I get to this one? Again, same thing. Red block. Red blocks. So there. Now we've got Tetris on our uh, bathroom floor there. And how to do this inside of the compositor? Well, it's the same idea. We just have to have more than one plane track deform and more than one alpha over. So let's go and see that really quickly. Okay, so over here, compositing, um, you know, I'll just go ahead and do that, use nodes, fine. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and add our different sources. So we've got our uh, bathroom floor over here. Let's go ahead and press Alt Home to zoom that out. Okay, and then we will need um, an image, a single image one, which we can point uh, point and connect it up to our different 
plane track now our plane track deform so we're going to need two of those okay so for each one okay you know what? i'll just do it like that and then duplicate so it's not to confuse myself so this is the top this is the bottom and each one needs this image and now to finish it off we need to add our alpha over which is under color so there's our first alpha over so we'll connect that to that and let's see it okay right, there we go there's the top part and then let's duplicate this over here and that will connect that's our top and then this will be the bottom socket and <laughs> control shift left click to view and it didn't work uh why didn't it work oh didn't i for, i thought i had made that connection there we go so there you got it there you go uh, we have our multi-piece uh, replacement here and that is the end of this video i hope you did like that if you did please do give this a like and consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you can get notifications when there are any updates to content here Thanks again for watching and see you next time. Bye now.